Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 16th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now we're continuing our study through the book of Ephesians and when we were last together we left off at verse 14 of chapter 1. Now before we pick up in verse 15 I want to read this passage from the message so I'd like you to follow along with me if you have a message Bible. If you don't just listen to these words and allow them to speak to you and to bless you. Paul says that's why when I heard of the solid trust that you have in the master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I'd think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank. I ask, ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing Him personally, that your eyes would be focused and clear, so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. That you will grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power is exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all. He has the final word on everything. At the center of all of this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body, in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. Oh, friends, what a marvelous way to say what Paul has said in modern simplified English. But let us go to the King James Version, beginning at verse 15. And let's dissect this a little bit and see how we can apply this in our lives as followers of Jesus. Now Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. People are talking about these believers in Ephesus. There's something going on among them. The presence of Jesus is so real in their lives that they are the conversation at the dinner table. And Paul has heard of what is being said about these believers, and it's brought him much joy. Now let us think of our lives. Do we bring pleasure to the Lord Jesus? Is he speaking of us unto the angels? Is he bragging about us in the way that we live our lives, the sacrifices that we're making, the commitment that we're offering? Well, Paul says, above everything that's being said of you, specifically they are talking about your love unto all the saints. You know, Jesus said that they will know you by your love. And we know that love isn't love unless it costs us something. And so these believers are going out of their way to help one another. And I'm sure that this help is through finances. This help is through menial tasks, serving one another helping each other through great times of need. And this love is being manifested before all. And so Paul says in verse 16, I know that the Lord Jesus goes before you and supports you in your commitment unto him, but I want to help back that up. I want to be a part of that support. So I want to join Jesus in his efforts. And I do this through the prayers that I offer unto you. I become a participant in what Jesus is doing in your life by joining him in agreement through the fellowship and the prayer that I offer for you. And so he says, I never cease to give thanks for you. I speak of you every time I go before the Lord. I make mention of you in my prayers. 
And the essence of my prayer is that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Now remember, wisdom from the Greek means how we are to regulate our relationship with God. Now think about that for a moment. How we are to regulate our relationship with God. And Paul says, I want God to give you this wisdom so that you know how to walk pleasing unto him. And you do this by seeing yourself in the proper relationship. He is God, you are a servant. And it is Jesus who has been exalted in glory. And Paul's desire is that we be given a revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, that we will see the unveiling of Jesus. We will see him as he truly is, as both servant and king, as both savior and master. And that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. They will be open to new truth. That we may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the reward of our service? What will be the outcome of our surrender and our allegiance? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, his spirit living within us, empowering us to live above sin, to live above temptation, to walk in his spirit and not after the flesh. And this is according to the working of his mighty power. He wrought it in Christ, it dwelt in Christ, he the spirit dwelt in Christ when Christ walked on the earth. And in the same way that power raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, so he offers the same power unto us as his children. And we can truly know what it means to walk through this life in victory. And that sets us apart, friends, from the majority of the people of the world because all of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our desires, all of our passions are deeply grounded in the Lord Jesus. And it is Jesus who is far above all principalities, all rulers, all powers, which in the Greek means authorities. And it would seem to be speaking of earthly authorities. But then it says might, and that's speaking of supernatural authorities. And dominions, which is evil angelic rulers, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, in the spiritual world. You see, among the angelic beings, there are designations of angels who are rulers in the heavenly places. And we know this is true for the fallen angels as well. They carried their dominions of authority with them when they fell. And yet, whether they be heavenly angels or fallen angels or any other type of dominion in the heavenlies, in the spiritual realm, all has been put under the feet of Jesus. Jesus has been given a name above every name. He has been exalted above all others. And the only that are equal to him in power, glory, majesty, and might are the Father and the Spirit. And it is Jesus who is to be the head over all things, most specifically to his body, the church, all those who surrender to his will and to his way. And it is in his body, in his people, that Jesus is seen throughout the earth and witness is given to the great things that he can do. And so as we close this morning, friends, when people look at you, do they see Jesus? Because that is the purpose of the body. Just as Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, so should we be able to say, if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. And that's why we have a great responsibility how we live our lives upon this earth so that we are true ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And this responsibility should weigh heavy upon us guiding us in everything that we say, everything that we do, and every way that we act. 
so that each and every day of our lives, we are becoming more like him and less like ourselves. And we do this through our commitment to him and our service to others. And so I want to leave you with this thought today. Stop and think on deeply the power that it took to resurrect Jesus from the grave, friends. Because the Bible has promised us that is the same power that dwells within us. And if we can get that in our spirits, if we can lock that into our minds, if we can understand the full meaning of this truth, our journey through this world will be one of wonder and delight. Or as the Bible says, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Listen to what Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, empower, and enable your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. You will walk in new life with new power. Because the spirit of the almighty resides within you, enabling you to do so. What a wonderful truth, friends. I pray that that will sink deep into your spirit and that it will be the charge that you need in your life. So that as 1 John chapter 2 tells us, you can walk through this earth, through this world in your time here. You can walk as Jesus walked. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that your journey will be blessed today. I pray that your eyes will be open to new truth. And I pray that you'll see Jesus in all of his glory, all of his majesty, all of his power, and all of his might. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.